Hello, Victor here, RestoringMercedes.com. This video is for David in Long Island, and this is going to be a relatively quick one. It's kind of cold, but I finally get to work on this car here. Uh, at least to connect, to connect my computer to see what's going on with the engine. Right now we're going to concentrate on the engine. And then after that, we'll go to other things like suspension and whatnot. Now the engine here, let me just show you. Pretty much uh, the only code that I had in the engine was that switch over valve that was never connected. I don't know why. Yeah, and of course my computer is gonna freeze up. Um, so anyway, see here we go. EGR switch over valve for some reason was disconnected. So I connected it back right there. And uh, I showed it to you <coughs> when you came. So that is the only code that I had. And then the secondary secondary bank had had no codes which is great now there is still a couple of issues here so we could go to actual value and compare see this is the secondary bank and that one is reading a little bit too high usually it's a little lower and then oxygen sensor is good as you can see the, the change is huge and off and off ratio holds around 50 which is nice now let me induce the problem now I'm gonna create vacuum leak real quick just so you see the difference here so we're looking at a vacuum leak right now I just disconnected one of the vacuum hoses and we see our on off ratio is climbing because it tries to enrich it and as you can see it's trying to because it keep, keeps enriching and enriching the mixture and see it's 70 66 it is still kind of managing to bring oxygen sensor in the range let me connect vacuum back here the vacuum is hooked up so no more vacuum leak there and we clearly see our on off ratio is coming down to 50 range which is great now the problem here I see is we go to the primary bank and in primary bank <clears throat> it's actually started to read right now something closed up or something because primary bank was actually pegging up to 90 and now it is actually good so something must have activated when the engine heated up something closed some sort of a valve or something so I have to double check again I just started working on it so I don't I didn't put into um, lots of hours or anything yet this is just preliminary looking up for the uh, lookout for the uh, what's happening here <coughs> the uh, this one is about right 14 this is where it's supposed to be I don't know if we have anything to do with mass airflow yet but again as I go I'll check also let's try to see if we can get readouts to change when I wiggle these wires that were not repaired properly all the way so somebody repaired mass airflows but we clearly see they only made a patch repair which is fine in certain instances not in this case because we have wires flaking off all the way starting from here down in there under the computer um, all the way down there so that has to be corrected let me try to move them around and maybe I get it to do something. Usually it's moisture, there it goes. The readout just jumped a little bit to 16, 15 again.
but as you can see it was like in 13 range now it's in 15 range let's see if when AC shuts off I should have not actually tested it with AC on let me shut down the AC because it changes the load on the engine so we shut off climate so we have no AC compressor kicking in yeah so that could have been influenced by the AC compressor still moving the wires a little bit 14.1 I mean obviously readings will change also it is not known what's up with the mass airflow sensor this is original that one has a sticker on it so it was some sort of a replacement well anyway yeah right now our readout come up pretty good could be the actual oxygen sensor that is tired and it took it took some time for it to warm up to get readings to fluctuate properly actually this is nice I mean now I like it because before this would sit on like 90 and that's it it won't move 90 percent trying to enrich the mixture it wasn't doing that it was just sitting there see this one is good so right now we're we are pretty balanced right now in terms of the engine both banks left and right yeah 55 oh okay yeah I see what happened I see what happened the adaptation went up that's what happened that because it was at zero now it's 2.7 so it adapted the idle speed control, this is great. And the uh, LH2, 5.3, a little high, but if it makes it happy, let it be. Um, the Yeah, that's what happened. Because before the adaptation was at zero, and it uh, idled for a while and went up to 2.7. So it actually balanced itself. 59, 53. Now I'm happy with that. That's going to be good. I'm still going to run smoke test on it. Make sure that there are no vacuum leaks. Engine runs beautiful. Very, very nice. Now, fan clutch activated. We still have to replace it because it's sort of lazy. You see, it did not. It did not help. It did not hold, actually. If the fan clutch is, is, is weak when you give it gas, it's supposed to still keep the fan engaged, but in this case, it's freewheeling. So it engaged once, so it is to be replaced. Uh, okay, so, yeah, the readout is still okay. What I'm going to do next is, obviously, what's our course of action here? Smoke test to be done, make sure everything's okay here. I'm going to swap out mass airflows to make sure that it is not that there is a problem with vacuum but uh, I mean there is no, there's not a problem there with mass airflow sensor reading differently because again due to the age this one could have been older than that one or vice versa most likely though that looks original that looks to be replacement so maybe that's the reason why there is a difference in readings you cannot you cannot get them to be exact but as close as you can get them the best would be so the engine would run equal the reading is still sort of hovering 60 now 57 but still that's fine that's that's working that's good um, so that's what I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to change all these wires for the new ones all the way down to computer uh, that's the second thing and um, <clears throat> here the control valve yes we have to actually you know what I'm gonna do now Let's see if I can get EGR valve activated because what's funny about it is that why was it disconnected? Maybe there was a problem here somewhere. LH1 was disconnected. This is EGR. Let's go inside the car and take a look because I have to cycle ignition. <coughs> it's interesting. Why was it done like that? Why was it disconnected? Maybe they forgot to connect it, but... Shut the ignition off. Ignition is on.
ok values are achieved shut down AC postal enrichment should shut off yes increase agent speed okay so we'll go to ah, I'm not gonna even do that okay so it should drop by about um, you know by 50 yes oh yeah oh I feel it okay all right so EGR valve works look at that 650 636 679 665 off off look at that so I don't know why it was disconnected it could have been that somebody forgot about it that's the reason why they pull out check engine light because they couldn't get rid of it and therefore um, that's but clearly working there it goes yeah that you can actually hear the engine yeah perfect so I hit yes um so we are okay so I don't know why was it the, probably forgotten somebody probably did some work and they forgot about it let's do EGR on the secondary side like I said just just have to check out the actual valves okay temperature is reached post start enrichment with on 750 690 oh yeah I feel it right away like it, the engine is just start shaking and it, very unhappy oh god this is the computer it screws up from time to time but this one works for sure okay I have to leave it to that because it's been it's, you know the, the the file is very huge for the video of over 10 minutes so I will have to combine the two but yeah all right so preliminarily like the engine is more or less healthy so I'm actually okay with it the LH2 yeah more or less now 4854 let's do LH1 53 yeah okay so readout came readout came back so that's good news could have been oxygen sensor warmed up well or it could be that um, some valve opened up and it could be adaptation values came up because again adaptation values here it was at zero and now it's 2.7 so it corrects itself okay so I'll leave it to that for now I'll sniff around here like I'll check out the suspension codes because I cannot get suspension to actually do anything and this is very strange okay so the suspension light does not does not come on at all it's removed check engine light is removed that's to be installed again this bulb also to be replaced and suspension is doing nothing the car is very stiff the computer does not connect to it via multiplexer so I will have to connect to it with wires I'll show you suspension and it's not not connecting you see it's not connected or open whatever I'll take a look at it real quick it's just not pleasant day to work on cars oh the ashtray situation this was bothering me really but it's the springs the springs there are two springs that's supposed to hold it up I mean they're supposed to actually push it open and they're not they're not in their places so therefore it doesn't close all the way it's kind of annoying it looks horrible when it's like sticking so see ASR does work there is no LED on this but on this button but if I press the button triangle comes on and off so there we have a pro no problems there 
fan clutch is weak so you can see the temperature is rising <clears throat> being that 45 outdoors outside and that's a little too high like about 100 there on the on the dial so all right so that's it that's enough of me talking <clears throat> we'll continue i'll make another video of maybe about suspension when i get to it so this was a first part sort of like the engine situation but it's coming along all right so this is all victor here restoreyourmercedes.com thank you for watching okay and then uh this is another quick addition uh, for this uh, um, for the uh, suspension situation so David yesterday I was I was working on the uh, on the life readings and whatnot and today and actually yesterday I was really concerned about the suspension because I was kind of like uneasy about it and I was uh, I found the problem the problem is broken connector under the computer and what's uh, funny about this particular vehicle this is like <clears throat> It's a little newer style ADS system, the adaptive dampening system. It's like a three stage, which is like it's kind of like ADS two, the second version, which is like I don't know why. It's could have it's it's gotta be like later later VIN number vehicle. Let me take a look. Yeah, the the VIN number is kind of late, so that could be this is like a little better um suspension situation here so connector was broken in uh, this control module uh, the one that you have i see that somebody opened it up to see what's going on inside but they couldn't find anything but here it is what, what's happening now is when we put on the ignition as you can see suspension light is on now because now it makes proper contact when I start the car, see the triangle there. Let me see here. So it's a triangle there. Suspension light is lit. And then when we start the car, suspension light goes out, which is proper. So see, no no lights. I mean, I know it's kind of sunny. It's the morning time. And um, yeah, and another thing is, you see the suspension switch activates and it does work actually which is nice because i drove it a little bit and i feel the front is nice it changes rear doesn't because uh, probably accumulators are blown so i put them on the list of parts at this mileage they most likely are blown and suspension in the back sits high so yeah we have to do that but this is good news because this is kind of a rare module and it usually is installed in 96 cars and you have it installed in yours and like I said, this is most likely the later, it is a late win number, late production 95. So we're pretty good here. I already made the list here with parts that I'm going to call you later on. <clears throat> and um, we discuss uh, the parts or just, you know, I'll just order them up. And um, runs pretty good. I mean, it just read its adaptations uh, and uh, like you saw in the video and uh, yeah I like it it feels pretty good too so this is the suspension situation so I'm pretty happy that we don't have to deal with the, the, these things can get tricky really tricky so as you can see now we have it we have it activating also <clears throat> I did run all the tests and i can see each and every valve activates too so that's good uh computer allows you to activate valve by valve and um all four all around they did activate right so i like that okay so yeah so this is gonna be all for now and uh i'll see what i'm gonna do next obviously parts and then uh, uh the wiring and well we'll keep going all right, so this is all. Victor here is StoryMercedes.com. Thank you for watching.